I'm thinking I'm going to go to. The, they got a couple of Manchester shows coming up. I think I'm going to go to those. But uh, because it's it's always a pain. The venue there is like not far from Old Trafford, so the hotels are crazy. What well, busy? I, I don't know if it's whether they're busy. I, I would imagine that they're just like um, maybe it's just because I'm not used to to being in cities too much. But like the the price seems so much too, higher. Too upper class than, to, yeah. I I love a class, you know, uh, but I, I think it's probably just the because it's a it's you know a Friday and Saturday. I don't know if Man United are playing at home over that weekend, but I would imagine those hotels, you know, they can pretty much charge what they want. Packs. They're yeah. so close to Old Trafford that like it doesn't matter. People will people will pay whatever, you know, like yeah. tourists coming in and stuff like that. If they you know want to watch United be game whilst the they're over. To- be worth the hotel room to go and watch a Cage Warriors show. Let me tell you. Oh, you know I mean? there, 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 there's my bit of my promotional, <laughs> my promotional <laughs> work for Cage Warriors still ongoing, even though I've left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Once a part of the the Cage Warriors family, always a part of me, always. Yeah, a hundred percent. Get me some shares, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Manchester card as well is the the light heavyweight title. So you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is. Yeah, Matty Byfield and Andrew Clamp. I know I've spoken about that before, but um, yeah, let's let's go, Matty Byfield. Go bring it for the, uh, I guess you could say, closer to to, to London people. <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. He, he's he's he, he's my boy. I've I've known him for I've known him for a long time, and uh, yeah, I hope he hope he goes out there and takes it with both hands. He deserves it, and uh, but it'll be an interesting matchup either way. Both guys are very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll just keep the episode off like that, I guess. So uh, welcome back to, to Gladiator Diaries, episode 23. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, mate. So what have you been up to over the last couple of weeks? What have they looked like for you? So I had my friend from Germany, uh, Sebastian Heil. Uh, he's actually fighting on Octagon. I'm going to be cornering him for his fight in Stuttgart. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an absolutely amazing event. They 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 always run a good show. I think there's fifteen thousand people in that venue. Um, people really support Octagon, especially in Germany. Actually, it's becoming a lot more well known. They're doing a lot more shows in Germany. Um, but yeah, so obviously I went to train with him. Uh, now he's just he's just come to me for a week. It was his son's birthday, second birthday on the weekend, so he came back home for his birth for his son's birthday, and now. Next week, he's going to come back again for another week uh, to come train with me. So, yeah, it's been really good to have him. Um, he's always very dedicated and very committed uh, to his training, uh, to his recovery, as I've mentioned many times. So it's very, it's a very good influence for him to be around me in my household. Um, and he's a very good training partner. He's very skillful. And, um, yeah, obviously, I'm just helping him to to to, to get that win uh, on the 23rd of March and looking forward to go out there to corner him uh, in Octagon. So, um, yeah, and see how the see how their shows are run. I mean, I've 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 uh, had a taste of it when I went to corner Marcin Lazar's in Bratislava. So now we'll see how it's running Stuttgart. But, um, yeah, and aside from that, I've just been training like normal, um, you know, reg- regular scheduled program. Um, my dad and I are conducting or uh, creating a kettlebell program that will be available on the App Store, hopefully within the next month. I uh, just got a few last minute things to to really finish off on there. And um, yeah, we'll be able to sell that sell that program to the public and um yeah i think it'll be a a really good thing it'll be very different to how everyone else has taught kettlebells it'll be our take on it um a lot of people mention how strong i am um uh, you know when they grapple me and you know when they fight me they don't expect me because you know i'm quite a lean leaner sort of build to most of the guys that are bulkier um so yeah, it'd be good to be good to get that information out there. Like I say, we do things very differently to how it's done in the in the new age, as as they say. My dad's learned it from you know the Soviet times, where you know guys were just like powerhouses, brick brick shit houses. You know what I mean? So um, and it's definitely you know me being able to Turkish get up with forty four kilo. Uh, you know these these skills have been uh, been well developed over the years. So that will also be coming out as well. So yeah, just aside from training, developing this app, um, just waiting, man. It's just just a waiting game. 
it's again trying to enjoy the process and not worrying too much about the end thing you know not worrying too much about a fight at the end of it and trying to enjoy life you know the day to day um you know if i need to take a session off because i need to do some private so i need to do some work so be it but we're still improving the main thing isn't to improve and then when it gets to the training camp that's when everything becomes even more like solid and, and strict and how you'd want it to be during a training camp um so i'm looking forward to stepping things up another level when training camp does in fact go ahead i heard tyson pedro actually um took a fight on four weeks notice so you know potentially there could be a matchup coming right around the corner so i'll always be in shape my cardio is good so yeah man it's regular schedule program um as as per usual for for the life of a fighter you mentioned the the octagon shows that obviously you're going to be going out to uh in germany um obviously they've they've come over to the uk a couple of times now um i haven't been able to get to to either of those but they look absolutely fantastic i think i'm i'm actually you know the the one time i'm I'm not going to be close to birmingham is when they're doing their birmingham show so i'm going to miss out on that yeah. one as well but um yeah like you said the spectacle always looks fantastic the stuff that they do like uh what was the experience of the the first one that you went to what was the crowd like for that one like size wise because some of the crowds the, the crowd, they crowd, are crazy the crowd was in every single event i know that they pull in massive crowds massive it's mad how much support they get and there's a lot of respect in Bratislava or those Eastern European countries. There's a lot of respect for the fighters, whereas I don't feel this is quite the same maybe in the UK. Maybe now it's a bit more so um, because the, the sport is obviously growing. But from what I noticed over there, like everyone's like madly respectful. And there was a lot of people in Bratislava, a lot. Like it was, it was packed. It was in like some old Olympic uh, horse riding stadium. Uh, so you know they had a, they had a lot of seats there. One thing I thought was a little bit weird was that the changing rooms weren't great for warming up, um, and the organisation was a little bit off. Like even my friend like couldn't get like his medicals uh, afterwards. Not like there was no medical team. He had a massive cut and he needed to you know he needed to get that stitched up. And they just put like a plaster on it and said, "Here, off you go." Um, I'm I'm obviously guessing that has improved since that. I think that was their first time doing it in that particular venue whereas they they usually now stick to similar venues so maybe it was just something different for them uh with you know but aside from that i mean the production uh the crowd the you know the facility it, it was absolutely amazing um but yeah i mean obviously it was just a bit difficult i think the language barrier you know um not knowing any uh i think it's uh what's it um Slo Slovakian over there, isn't it? In Bratislava. Yeah, yeah not, that not, would be my guess. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, so yeah, and you know, trying to get everything sorted, like getting gloves and this and that. Um, you know, Cage Wars has always been very on point from what I've seen in terms of getting the gloves, having runners around everywhere, getting everyone sorted. Um, in that event that I went to, like I say, it, it was great. The production was brilliant, but behind... In, in the in the changing rooms was, was a little bit the after party was sick everything was done like really well but just yeah just in the in the back it, it, i felt it could have been a little bit more organized from what i know um however uh like i say i know that their future shows and, and shows of that my friends have been on um in octagon they've 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 always spoke very highly of it um so i'm guessing they've or obviously stepped up since those particular times um and yeah uh it, it looks like an amazing show so i'm really looking forward uh to go to germany and uh yeah see my boy get the win yeah it's times when when is that by the way 23rd of march right okay so yeah we got we go a couple of weeks couple of weeks okay. yeah cool Life. um the one of the major things I wanted to speak about specifically for this episode, um, speaking of venues, uh, was the UFC Apex. Obviously, a venue that uh, you have a, a particular history with throughout your career, and I feel like it's become, you know, a bigger talk. It was a big talking point like last year, anyway, but especially this year, I feel like, you know, I think uh, this weekend we've got a card at the Apex, which means um, they would have done more shows at the Apex this year than anywhere else, um, and I think, you know. Like I said, it's been a big talking point for for the last you know year, two years even, basically since COVID ended. Um, and you know we've heard some fighters recently talking about it and getting their unique kind of um, 
version of events of, of what it's like being at the apex and some of the positives and negatives so i wanted to dive into some of that with you um one of the things i've seen mentioned was about in terms of getting people to the apex and things like that like how is it uh when you're fighting at the apex in terms of getting yo know, your I, I assume it works the same way as any other ufc event where you, do you get two corner men paid for and then if you want a third you have to pay for them is that correct uh, no, just one corner man gets paid for. The rest you have to pay yourself. Right. That's the same across the board, right? That's not specifically an Apex thing. Uh, that's all across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. How does it work with getting people uh, if if they want to come and support you? Because I know that uh, Jit came to watch the, the fight to the Apex, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, he did, yeah. It's a VIP event, so obviously the tickets are, for, for, the, for the average Joe, quite extortionate. Uh, but for Superman Jit... There is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing that is ever out of reach for that guy, a hundred percent. And uh, it was amazing to have him there, and also my friend Paulie as well. Um, so again, like I say, I've got the, you know the, the whole crew that have been on here on the podcast uh, come support me in the fight. Um, it's yeah, it's difficult. I mean, it's not easy. You have to you know you have to cough up quite a bit of dough if you want to watch a UFC Apex event. I think it's cool for them because you're so close to the fighters. You know, it's not often, you know, if you're sitting in a massive stadium, you're not very close to the fighters a lot of the time. But here you're like literally right in the, it, I think it creates a different sort of vibe. And Sorry, I think we just, uh, we both just left there. Yeah, I, I lost you for a minute, but uh, I think we might yeah. be. I think we might be okay. It's just a little yeah. bit choppy, but it, it it's yeah. when you're speaking, it's fine. It just has like moments okay. of freezing. Okay, so yeah, with the with, it's very similar to Cage Warriors Unplugged show where it's a bit more of an intimate setting. One thing I would say is that they should make the cage the same size as everywhere. It should just be the same size. I know they switch in between contender series and then obviously the UFC shows. But in my personal opinion, I feel like it should be the same everywhere. It should be a level playing field, you know? Uh, I feel when people go to the eight, and, and you know, I, I think it's cool with, like, the crowd and everything, like the, the, the small crowd. You, th there's more of a crowd now, actually, in the Apex. There's more people coming to those events, um, w w which is nice to see, like, really, like, hardcore fans. Um, however, obviously, nothing beats nothing really beats going out into a stadium filled with 10,000 or more people. There's, there's nothing really that beats that. That's an absolutely different vibe and it's absolutely amazing. And, and, and I love it, but I, I do also see the side now where really it doesn't matter where you fight, you go in there, you've got to go and do the job. You're still going to get paid uh, regardless. And you, you need to go out there and do the job. So um, I just think the cage should be the same size. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite easy. Realistically, they do, like as a VIP experience, they do take care of the people that come and watch like really well, um, from what I've heard. So um, they're great shows. They're just hard to get to for the for the for the normal average guy. You know what I'm saying? Because like I say, the tickets are but very easy. Look, my uh, jit just message emailed the UFC directly. I think via one of the fan experience, um, and they were quick to respond, quick to get them sorted. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's very well organized. It's a very well oil oiled machine. Um, I still think it has quite a, quite a cool vibe. It's like a backyard brawl sort of vibe, you know, like almost like a blood sport type vibes, you know, very small amount of, you know, just it's got a very blood sport vibe to it. And, and I can imagine the intimacy of it makes it really cool for, for viewers to watch. And why it's so expensive, obviously, because you're getting that real, you know, up in your face fight. You know what I mean? Like organized fight. But I just do, as many fighters probably agree, the cage needs to be the same size. They've definitely got enough space for it. They, it needs to be 30 foot, really. Do you do you feel the the difference uh, in the size of the cage whilst you're in there? Because I feel like it's the kind of thing that a lot of people will hear and go, okay, yeah, so the people are going to be, you know, there's less space to skirt around the outside, so you might get a little bit more exchanges, whatever. But in terms of like, you know, when you're actually in there, it is a big thing that you've got to think about whilst you're in there as well as everything else that's going on. It's like if they changed the rule just for the yeah. like I, 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 I'm not sure what the reason, I feel like 
the, you know, for a while it was like, oh, it's a smaller cage, so you can get you get more action and stuff like that. But I, I don't think that I think we've seen that that doesn't translate because, sure, you might be closer together, but if you add you know a bunch of fans, like a bunch more fans, obviously thousands and thousands of fans, that's also going to motivate people to to exchange more and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I don't know I guess if it... the argument. Really hold. I guess it goes. I guess. I guess it goes both ways. Yeah. Like, like you said, if there's more fans, they'll be more motivated. And at the same point, you know, it, it, I think the smaller size does mean that you are having to engage a little bit more. It means that wrestlers are better able to get you to the cage. I feel it's a bit weird because a lot of fighters, then you know, who are at the top of the food chain, they are only fighting in big cages because they're fighting to sell out crowds. Whereas a lot of guys in the apex, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know, like so some guys rarely see the apex and some guys, you know, rarely see the, uh, the, 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 you know, the big, the big event shows. So it's really like, it's just sort of just a mixed bag, but I think ultimately when it comes down to it, you got to fight. doesn't matter what the environment is. You go in there, you got to do the thing. I, like I said, I still stand by my word. I believe it should be a, a universally, the same size however um the action is still the same whether it's in a big cage small cage whatever you see people want to engage and they want to fight they will fight you know what i mean so um like i said it's just got different different sides you know what i mean you've got big arena loads of people uh bigger sort of vibe uh or like a smaller intimate more more backyard like blood sport type vibe so um but like I say, you're in there to make money, you're in there to get paid, you're in there to put on a show, and uh, it's down to the individual to adapt to the surroundings and put on a show. It's interesting to hear you talk about it and compare it to like blood sport or something like that, because I think that, uh, you know, again, one of the criticisms thrown at it is that maybe it feels a little bit like sparring at points. And I know that some fighters have said like they don't like that aspect of it. But like for you mentally, do you think it, it plays... Um, a factor in your performance fighting with a live crowd versus that because I had always viewed it as yeah maybe it feels a little bit more like sparring but I suppose in the right mindset you could turn it into you know it suddenly feels like Mortal Kombat where you know there's a select few people in attendance to watch you two guys fight in this small kind of enclosed space yeah well it's the wealthy members of society are there to to be entertained you know what I mean so uh, I, I guess it is a little bit gladiatorial in 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 that sense, um, and I mean, like, like I say, which, whichever way you put it, um, you, you you know you have to perform either way. You know, whichever whichever situation gets thrown at you. I mean, it, it, it's quite a considerable difference, though. I, I like when when you're in there. You know, it's that you're two steps away from the middle as opposed to three or four steps away from the middle. Um, so there are those things that come into come into play. Um, and I think the Apex is clearly here to stay. I thought that they were going to get rid of it this year, but it seems as though they want to just keep it running. And it is a very well-oiled machine, though, I believe. It, it's just made so easy for the UFC and, and, and everyone involved to, to, to get everything sorted. Um, with the hotel is theirs. Do you know what I mean? The, the Apex is theirs. So... Uh, all the media know exactly where they're going, exactly what they're doing. They don't have to, you know, adjust to a particular, um, you know, place or anything like that. So everything just goes like, you know, very, very prompt. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, like I say, it, it's, it is a great venue. I still enjoy, you know, although I've had my fair share of moments in there, uh, I did, I did still enjoy it. I, either way, you're still getting ready for a fight. You know what I mean? You, you, the warm-up areas are, are amazing. Like the warm-up area in Brazil was <laughs> horrific. Like a, like a prison cell you're in, like a small mat space. Whereas at the apex, you've got a big, you know, big, nice warm-up area. So everything has its pros and cons. But ultimately, we're there to fight. We're there to get paid. We're there to entertain. So whichever way you put it, we've got to go and get the job done, you know? One of the conversations I've seen going back and forward between fans on social media about this is kind of the um, the argument of would you rather have 
regular fights, right? Every week, you know, maybe you get one or two a month that don't happen in the Apex, two that do, but you get fights every week from the UFC regardless, or whether they would rather the UFC go back to constantly being on the road, but maybe you get more gaps in the schedule and, and less events, less fights overall, right? Like, in terms of somebody who, like, you know, you are waiting to get a fight right now. I think maybe people don't necessarily realize that, you know, despite the fact that you're in the UFC, which is by far and above the sport leader, you still have to wait to get fights. It's not, there's not, you know, someone waiting on your every move to be like, yeah. oh, you're ready to go. Here we go. Yeah. You know, So for you, like, does that kind of outweigh the negatives of the Apex? The fact that, you know, if you do get another fight, there's a pretty good chance of it being in the Apex. And sure, maybe, you know, a, a sold out arena might be, you know, the glitz and the glamour of it all. But ultimately, you're a pro fighter. You're getting a fight. And you can't really turn those down. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, there has to be an event every week. There's so many guys on the roster. Everyone is 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 contracted to be offered free fights a year. Whether you take those or not is obviously down down to you. But the point is, you're you're offered free fights a year. So, and and if you think about it, there has to be f almost 52 shows a year in order to fill that that quota for everyone. If you imagine there's about 16 fights maximum on a card, 16 times, let's just say 49. I don't know how much that is, but do you know what I mean? Like how many guys are on the roster? That's only in the thousands we're talking. Do you know what I'm saying? Like um, if you put everyone all together, I mean, how many, again, how many weight classes? I think the max for one weight class is about 80, 70 or 80. Um, and to the lower end, like my division's 35. So, you know, what I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of people that need fights out here. So uh, to fill up those cards to make sure everyone reaches their quota is going to be a difficult job. So they have to do shows every week. And, and like you said, it's just better to, to, to have the apex because it means that the shows can keep running and we can get paid. Do you know what I mean, we can go out there, we can get our name out there and we can get paid. So um, I'm thankful for it being run this way um, because it's the most well-oiled machine out of all the promotions it, it, it does by far the best and um they've got a system in place why change it it's working very well um and yeah man long may it continue um it'll be nice to have the fight nights where you're going to different venues because I, I remember there, there, there were actually shows every week and it's probably a lot of logistic things to to, to organize in order to do like big stadium shows all the time so um, you know, I think I think it works well. I think it works well. Um, like I say, as long as I can fight, as long as I can fight often, I'm a happy guy. If uh, if there was ever a scenario where you were pitched um, in one year to have either three fights at the Apex or two fights, but in you know venues with full sold out crowds and stuff would there ever be a scenario where you would side with the the arenas over the activity like how important to you is that compared to just being active and doing what you do put it this paid? way put it this way i want activity now but later on in my career um two fights a year at a big show is absolutely fine depending on how much money you're getting paid because you should be getting paid more if i'm going towards the top 15 and fighting for belts Two fights a year is plenty. You know what I mean? In terms of um, having people wanting to see you fight and stuff like this, I would love to have three. Even as a champion, I'd love to have three fights a year. But if we're talking about probably whilst you're trying to put your name, three fights at the apex in, in a year probably is more suitable. But then once you're you're getting up there, like you know, building your name, building your your repertoire, getting in the top fifteen, that's when you're looking at you know, two fights a year on big 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 shows you know but of course activity is king i would love to be active for as much i've got a very short career maybe seven eight maybe eight years maximum so i need to make the most of it whilst i can um so yeah activity for me probably would be king especially yeah. for right now um I suppose in terms of, you know, you already spoke a little bit about how, you know, how much of a well-oiled machine it is fighting there where, you know, the whole, you know, like you said, it isn't like the venue in Brazil where they're hosting different things every other week, right? It is literally just built for hosting fights every single weekend. So it's a purpose-built 
facility like how much of that is a is a difference on fight night where you know you haven't got to worry about those little things you know especially when you've already fought there you know it's kind of like you're just going to work in a way you know everything you know the staff that are going to be there you know the facilities that are available you know the layout roughly you know what yeah. i mean like, and i think as well my management team i think they're all live in vegas it's right, so yeah. easy i mean my management do an amazing job like literally i can get my laundry done i can get everything booked straight away if i i needed a bank account bang i can sort you out a bank bank account if you need this you need that i'm there like they're they are there for everyone you know um and they know where everything is so anything you need is like from, whereas if you're in brazil or australia oh, i have to search and find what the best place is obviously my management will do their best in terms of finding the best places to go and train and to do things but realistically yeah in vegas they know where everything is uh they know where everyone needs to go uh, how it needs to be you know where all the locations are it's made very easy so you know uh from that side yeah it's uh very well organized very well organized uh, speaking of the the card this weekend that, that prompted this whole conversation, the co-main event is between two guys that you have fought in your career in the UFC. Uh, have you ever had two guys that you fought fight each other before? Um, hmm, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I, uh, not that not I can that, think not, of, but not 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 that I can think of. Um, uh, yeah, not that I can think of. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, it's very interesting for me to see this fight because obviously beating Pedro but losing to Petrino, um, it's a clash of styles. Um, you know, they're both very skilled. Obviously, Pedro has been in the game a lot longer. His experience will obviously play into play into effect. But obviously, as you can see, Pedro uh, Petrino has got that that knockout power. Um, Pedro does use his grappling and he does use it well. So obviously that would be something that would be a factor. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very close fight. It'd be very entertaining for me to see. Um, and yeah, you know, both amazing athletes. Uh, and yeah, like, like I say, it's just, it's a very interesting fight. It's just a very interesting fight. Um, just because like I say, I, I, I feel, you know, although, you know, massive fair play to Petrino. He did it, you know, he, he caught an incredible punch and, you know, great, great knockout. Um, however, I still felt like, you know, given a bit more time and given I had not got caught with that punch, I, I definitely uh, could have done a lot of damage in that fight. So with that being said, um, I do think, you know, Pedro's skill set um, may be able to overwhelm him, but I have no idea because Petrino is also skilled in many areas and he's very powerful. So if he catches one or two uh, in a smaller cage, it might be a different story. So as you can see, it's very interesting. You kind of go back and forth between who could potentially win. Um, but both of them, great fighters. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're very, like I say, very skilled and it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top uh, as I say, I'm very neutral in that fight. Um, I believe both of them have a chance to win, and I'm just excited to see what will happen. Is there much that, like, in watching that fight, you... Because I'm sure, you know, without opponents fighting each other, I'm sure, you know, you can watch previous opponents and then, you know, take things from, you know, watching their other fights, like, after you fought them. Like, what kind of... Like, what can you gain from watching this fight in terms of, you know... It might be things that you go, oh, in hindsight, this would have worked against this guy, or oh, that guy's really good at this. I didn't know that before. But you know, but in terms of the things that you might actually gain from watching this yeah, fight, like, as well like, as just you know, enjoying it. What did he do that I didn't do? What did what did what did he not do that I did do? Um you know, that th there'll be many there'll be many questions answered with that fight. Um, like I said, I truly and fully believe that I could beat both of them. Um, so, you know, with the skill set that I have and I possess, but, you know, where did I go wrong? Where, 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 where could I have done better in both those fights? You know what I mean? Where, where did I go wrong? You know, where could I have potentially done a bit better? So it'd be easy. It would be very nice to see how they, how the clash of styles is going to, is going to, is going to play out, you know, who's going to do what, how they're going to play it. 
you know what's what's going to be their 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 tactics their strategy so there's a lot of, there's a lot of things riding on that fight and it's very interesting to see and it's very you know it's great for me to see both of them go out there compete against each other see who's the best uh, at the end of the day this is what we're in this game for to see who's the best so uh best of luck obviously to both of them yeah uh, i look forward to seeing it and then uh, and then chatting to you about it next week uh, i don't think there's anything else mate, unless there's anything else that you wanted to get to before the end nothing do you know what nothing to report uh, aside from as i mentioned um it's just kind of trying to live this life sort of apart from as i say uh, getting this uh, getting this app sorted and putting it on the app on the app store and stuff like this uh, which is other having other focuses and other um, things to concentrate on because, as I say, I'm not getting a fight. Um, who knows when that will be, how long it will be. You know, it, it, from Tyson Pedro's case, he got it on, I think he mentioned, on four weeks' notice. So it potentially could happen very quickly. I'm always going to be in shape. You know, obviously, I'm going to fine-tune everything to make it bit, things a little bit more strict as, get, as a fight does get announced. Um, I'm still trying to live my life the way of the athlete, the way of the guy who's going to, you know, go out there and perform, trying to get the most out of himself, get the most out of his body. I'm always trying to improve. Um, but like I say, sometimes it does become difficult. Um, trying to just go the day by day, trying to make money, uh, trying to sort out all the, all the business things, you know, and, uh, but like, I feel like taking risks is a big part of life. And I feel like, actually taking more risks in things outside of fighting i believe it's just a calling from god you know as i mentioned with a lot of things that have happened in my career and things that have happened recently i believe a lot of things were a calling from god you know and um i believe that this is another thing it's like you know get things sorted get things um you know get get get, get things going you know what you I, I remember writing in my in my book two years ago get the kettlebell system out there maybe this was the way to get that thing out in out in the open you know what i mean maybe that was part of the universe shifting me in in one particular direction and also i believe the loss was needed in order for me to go forward and to compete and win against the best of the best because now my skill set has improved tenfold I've been told by coaches, I've been, you know, I've been going in sparring and feeling good. I've been training with the likes of, you know, Tom Aspinall, which I am going to go back there again. I think after my uh, my friend from Germany, Sebastian, comes over, the week after that, I'll probably try and go out there um, and hopefully help Mick Park in a little bit with, because um, I know he's going to have his fight coming up very soon against Mohamed Usman. So it's just a very reflective time where I want to get shit done, you know, um, and it's actually having to make, better use of my time and actually again i'm going back to where i went a couple of years ago um when i was waiting for a fight at cage warriors enjoy the process enjoy the day by day do what you can make money and then when it when it gets to the time to get to the fight it will be at the right time when i fought lee chadwick it was the right time when i fought chuck campbell it was the right time same with pedro same with um uh same with Palga. And even same with Petrino and that loss had to happen in order for what's going to happen next. So it's very exciting. And um, as I say, uh, we don't look too far. One thing that actually my manager did a podcast, Jason House, and don't worry about things in the future too much. Worry about what you can do today. And I think I've said this on probably podcasts before. Worry about what you can do today. And uh, I think that's the best way to live life is in the present, in the now. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, sounds good, man. Couldn't have said it better myself. Um, right, I will probably catch you next week, maybe the week after. Uh, we'll just see how the week uh, plays out and, and we'll go from there, man. Yes, sir. Good vibes, good times. We out here doing bits. You know. Doing bits. All right. I'll catch <laughs> nice you later, one, man. Brother. All right, nice one, brother. Take care, man. See you later.